Today's episode is brought to you by Heifer International, and I'm super excited to have them as a sponsor because I've been giving to them and asking people to give on my behalf for years. If you're looking for the perfect holiday gifts for everyone on your list, know that just one goat from Heifer International can provide a whole family with nutritious milk. A gift of an animal from Heifer increases access to education, empowerment, and dignity. And the more gifts you buy, the more families you can help. It's an easy way to give gifts that really matter to all your friends and family. This is no ordinary gift. Learn more at heifer.org slash grammar. That's heifer.org slash grammar. Grammar Girl here. I'm Mignon Fogarty. This week, I have a tidbit about why we call businesses houses and a meaty middle about the origin of Black Friday and other Black Days. Let's get started. A few months ago, I was on Derek Lewis's podcast, The Business Book Podcast, that gives advice to people writing business books. And then just a few weeks ago, Derek asked me a question that piqued my interest. He wrote, Why do we say house in many business and professional settings? For example, house of Dior, house style, house salad, a major publishing house, etc. I hazard the guess that it's because virtually all businesses used to be home-based businesses, but I can't find anything anywhere on the subject. Well, like the word dead, which we talked about recently, house is an especially old word that goes back to Old English. Some of the earliest citations in the Oxford English Dictionary are from some of the most famous old manuscripts in the English language. Beowulf, the West Saxon Gospels, and Bede's Ecclesiastical Histories. The use of the word house to describe a place of business or a building used by people for non-residential reasons also goes back to Old English, though. It doesn't appear to be a later addition after house the residence. The OED notes that many compound words, such as almshouse, bathhouse, lighthouse, and slaughterhouse, use house to make compounds that describe the purpose of a structure. There are even Old English citations that resemble the more specific examples in your question, such as publishing house and house of Dior. Printing house, for example, first appeared in the mid-1500s, about 75 years after William Caxton introduced the first printing press in England. The first instance of the phrase style of the house looks like it appeared in 1871, and house style was first put in print in 1905. And casinos started being referred to as the house in 1776. Finally, an interesting tidbit I came across while researching all these uses of house is that supposedly Random House, the publisher, was not based on someone's name. There was no Mr. Random. Its name comes from the meaning of the word random, because in 1927, one of the founders said they were, quote, going to publish a few books on the side at random, unquote. And since it was a publishing house, they decided to call it Random House. I find that funny and charming. And since Random House merged with Penguin a few years ago to make Penguin Random House, I thought it would be fun to also look at how Penguin got its name, but the story there is a little less exciting. The founder wanted a logo that was dignified but flippant, and his secretary suggested a penguin. Anyway, back to the main question. Like Derek, I couldn't really find an exact answer as to why what we think of as a word for our residence is also used to describe so many different kinds of business entities. I can tell you that it doesn't seem like the residence meaning arose first to be followed by the business meaning. They seem to have emerged at the same time. And like Derek, I suspect it has at least something to do with the close intermingling of home and work life before the Industrial Revolution. I know almost nothing about the history of architecture, but Wikipedia has an interesting article about the evolution of housing design, and it says that most dwellings were communal and quite lacking in privacy during the 15th century and earlier. Supposedly, it wasn't until the late 1500s that homes were built with corridors that had rooms off them with one door so that people weren't passing through each other's rooms all the time. It's pretty interesting. I'll put a link to it on the transcript of this podcast at quickanddirtytips.com, and you can look into it more if you're interested. Thanks for the great question, Derek. Before we get to Black Days, thanks to our sponsor, Texture. 
winter is coming, and Texture app is here to help. Let's say you're hosting friends and want to impress. Texture delivers bon appetit and real simple to inspire your event. Anticipating dinner table debates? Arm yourself with the finest reporting from the Atlantic in time. And when the cold winter hits, let Afar and Airbnb Mag take you away and inspire your next vacation. No matter what mood you're in, let Texture and unlimited access to more than 200 premium magazines help inform, entertain, and inspire you this winter. And right now, you can try Texture free. Just imagine having your favorite magazines and their back issues anytime, anywhere. To start your Texture free trial, go to texture.com slash grammar. If you choose to continue, podcast listeners will get Texture for just $9.99 a month. That's more than 30% off their listed price. There are also great gift options available for the holiday season. Go to texture.com slash grammar to start your free trial today. That's texture.com slash grammar. Texture.com slash grammar. And now on to Black Days by Rebecca Hochin. Across the United States, those who are not too replete with their Thanksgiving feast will be braving the crowds in order to secure themselves one of the bargains associated with Black Friday, the day following Thanksgiving, which is often regarded as the first day of Christmas shopping in the United States. Even on the Thanksgivingless shores of Britain, we're starting to see this tradition sneak in. Hunting down bargains is all well and good, but we're much more interested in hunting down the histories of words. Which other black days have been marked through history, and does black used in this way always denote negativity? Black Friday is seen as a day of huge profit in the world of retail, enough for some to have theorized that its origin is the day's ability to take a company in debt, or in the red, and pull them back into the black. This origin story may make this the first black day where the black is seen to be bringing positive associations— although an earlier theory holds that the name is a reference to the congestion caused in city centers, particularly in Philadelphia. This is nonetheless a step away from the disaster and ruin that's typically been carried by Black in this context. Though those working in customer services may wish that this year will be the last time we mark Black Friday, when was the first Black Friday? The earliest evidence for the term found by researchers at the Oxford English Dictionary is from 1610. It will surprise no one to hear that this Black Friday had very little to do with sales or Thanksgiving. The first Black Friday didn't refer to a specific Friday, but rather it was used in schools to refer to any Friday on which an exam fell. It's something of a comfort to know that even in the 17th century, exams were regarded with that same familiar dread. We've found no evidence from before 1951 of Black Friday referring to the day following Thanksgiving. And in this instance, its sense was markedly different to how we use the term today. In this context, instead, the day was associated with staff absences from factories following the Thanksgiving holiday. The first citation found for Black Friday in the sense of the start of the Christmas shopping season comes 10 years later, in 1961. The moniker has been attached to a number of different Fridays in the years between 1610 and 1951. The next one noted in the OED is Friday the 6th of December, 1745, which was the date that the Young Pretender's Landing was announced in London. The Young Pretender was hardly a welcome visitor, but the extent to which his proximity caused panic across the capital is a matter of debate. But this panic, real or a tool of political spin, nonetheless earned the day its dark title. The next date to be designated a Black Friday, noted in the OED, was again one of widespread panic. Friday the 11th of May, 1866, saw the failure of the London banking house Overland Gurney & Company. On the very next day, it was reported in the Times with some clairvoyance that, quote, The day will probably be long remembered in the city of London as the Black Friday, unquote. This is the first sense of Black Friday with strong financial associations, and it seems these only grow stronger in the 20th century. The third and last Black Friday listed in the OED happened just three years later, on Friday the 24th of September, 1869, 
when the introduction of a large quantity of government gold into the financial market precipitated a day of financial panic on Wall Street. The mid to late 1860s saw the beginning of a dramatic climb in use of the term Black Friday in both British and U.S. varieties of English, showing the impact of these events on the language. This is the last Black Friday to be found in the OED, but not the last day to have gained the title in popular use. The majority of those following Black Friday of 1869 echo the sense of financial ruin, or the associations Black Days also carry with loss of life. In recent years, we can be fairly sure which of these many Black Fridays is the subject of discussion in our new Monitor Corpus— as the term sees almost no use throughout the year and then skyrockets in November, petering out rapidly in December, and so coinciding with only one Black Friday on the calendar. Interestingly, this holds true even for British English, and English is in other parts of the world where Thanksgiving isn't celebrated. Though the term is much more common in U.S. English than in British English, its use in the United States appears to be declining— November 2015 saw only two-thirds as many instances of Black Friday in our corpus as November 2012. In contrast, use in British English is seeing a year-on-year increase, more than doubling between November 2012 and November 2013, and then seeing more than a 50% increase again between November 2013 and November 2014. It looks like the Brits might be catching up. Of course, Friday is not the only day to have found itself blackened. In fact, there's not a day of the week that hasn't earned its dark stripes through some disaster or another. The first day evidenced to have black prefixed to it was a Monday, more specifically Easter Monday. A quotation referring to Easter Monday as Black Monday has been found as early as 1389. There are a few competing theories for what caused the day to be so named. One historical theory holds that the name refers to a severe storm on Easter Monday in 1360, which led to the deaths of many soldiers of Edward III's army during the Hundred Years' War. A different historical theory purports that Black Monday is a reference to the massacre of English settlers in Dublin by the Irish on Easter Monday in 1209. The name may be unrelated to either event, and may instead be linked to a general belief in the unlucky character of Mondays, possibly influenced in this case by the view that misfortune will naturally follow a celebration like that of Easter Sunday. The next Black Monday, first quoted in the OED as far back as 1735, echoes our first Black Friday. This was school slang, referring to the first day of term following a vacation. The mindset of the pupils bleakly returning to the classroom is readily recognizable and easy to imagine. A third Black Monday, and the final one to have been noted in the OED, is affixed to a specific date. Monday the 19th of October, 1987, which is the day of a world stock market crash. This reflects the wider trend of days of great financial disaster being marked as black. Black Wednesday is used to refer to the 16th of September 1992, when there was a great surge in sales of the pound. And the Wall Street crash of 1929 was so disastrous as to leave two days painted black in its wake. Black Thursday, October 24, 1929, which marked the first day of panic selling on the New York Stock Exchange, and Black Tuesday, the following week, which is widely regarded as the day the stock market crashed. The most recent day to be referred to as Black Saturday in the OED was Saturday, August 4th, 1621, when the Articles of Perth were ratified while a brutal storm cast its shadow over the day. Almost a century earlier, the first Black Saturday, and also the first Black Day in the OED attached to a specific date, took place on Saturday, September 10th, 1547, denoting the day of the Battle of Pinky Klug, which saw Scotland catastrophically defeated. Though not a Black Day in itself, Cyber Monday follows Black Friday both on the calendar and in word formation. Cyber Monday takes the traditional bargains of Black Friday to an online environment, but does it leave behind the last remnants of negativity that Black Friday is carrying? Perhaps not, 
of the first 10 noun collocates of cyber that our Oxford English corpus finds, only two are either positive or neutral, cybersecurity and cyber cafe. The other eight, including cyber criminal, cyber attack, and cyber bullying, are all negative. This suggests that cyber might not be carrying the happiest connotations along with it, though it's doubtless an improvement on the memories of failed battles and financial collapse that cling to Black Friday. Given the cyber nature of Cyber Monday, it might be expected that it's more international than Black Friday. So far, this doesn't seem to be the case. The use of Cyber Monday in our new Monitor corpus is still overwhelmingly U.S. in origin, Although its use in United States English seems to be in decline, while its use in other varieties is climbing. This mirrors the trends we saw earlier with Black Friday, suggesting that taking place online is not a major factor in making Cyber Monday a globally recognized event. If it continues to follow on in the footsteps of Black Friday, we may find ourselves fighting it out digitally as well as in the shops in order to grab the best bargains for Christmas. A version of this article originally appeared on the Oxford Words blog and is published here with permission. Rebecca Hochen is an editor for Oxford Dictionaries. And I'm Mignon Fogarty. If you're looking for a great gift for your favorite teacher or editor, check out my tip-a-day calendar, The Grammar Daily, which is available at all the online bookstores and in some physical bookstores, too. Grammar Girl is part of the Quick and Dirty Tips podcast network. Check out some of our other great shows. The Nutrition Diva will help you create delicious, healthy meals. And the Mighty Mommy will help you wrangle your children. That's all. Thanks for listening. Oh.